We are seeing a change in what substance use used to look like. Um, a few years ago would have been for this particular area, um, the migrant farm workers and alcohol use. Then you would have seen a change where it became African American men um, wouldn't be in crack and cocaine. Um, now you look and you can see, if you look into the room, you see Caucasian men that are addicted to either meth or opioids. Um, and that's kind of the face of substance use that we've seen change. How does that face change? Is there any science behind it? Why would a guy like me seem to like meth or heroin more and someone who doesn't look like me like some other substance? What we found for here um, with the, as it relates to the opioid epidemic is that they didn't wake up one day saying, I just want to start trying IV heroin. Um, what actually happened is we see a lot of people, they got hurt, injured. Um, they've had great jobs. Some have been in law enforcement. Some were professionals. Um, and when they got hurt, they got prescribed some opioids. They needed it more and more. And then at one point, their prescriber said, I'm not giving you anymore. And then they turned to, what could I get on the streets? Um, what's le That's expensive on the streets. What can I get cheaper on the streets? And then all of a sudden, now they are addicted to IV heroin. It seems more socially acceptable to go to a doctor to get a pill than go to a street dealer to get a pill or heroin. But that's where this has gone. So how does that happen? Well, that's what the change is, because even when you first meet people that maybe aren't to the point yet where they're saying, I think I have a problem, they don't even realize it half the time because they're saying, no, I'm, I'm hurt. I, I, need, I need more of this medication. And truth is, if you get into the science of it, they actually are experiencing pain. I won't get into the science of it, but actually the abuse of it, it actually does start to um, affect the neurons that make them feel pain. So when they're saying they're in pain, they're legitimately in pain and they're seeking what can alleviate that pain. And before you know it, they're in addiction. But if I'm in pain, I'm not addicted. I can't be addicted. I need the medicine to be treated, you say. And that's who I then have to say, you have a problem. To someone that doesn't think it, I'm not addicted, I'm not a drug addict, this is not who I am, I have a family, I've been raised right, I'm from this area, and then how do I get here? Um, and then I've had one person even cry and say, well, why would my doctor give this to me if this could happen? People don't know that. Even the prescriber when giving it doesn't know if this one week is going to do it or if I write this 30 days, is this going to be the tipping point for the person? Some of it we don't know. It's got some family factors, environmental factors, but someone wakes up one day and all of a sudden, yes, this is you. I assume you've counseled people who have been addicted to opioid in the pill form, what would otherwise be legal prescription, and you've seen people who have converted to rec will be a recreational drug, but really it's a type of pain relief therapy. What's the difference in the approach and in the mindset from that person who's hooked on pills versus a person who might be hooked on heroin or fentanyl or some derivative? What we've seen is the stage that they're at. Um, those that we've seen where it's at the pills, usually they're at the point where they have insurance, they have a job, they have finances to pay for it. Um, they're not un unaware. The ones that we've seen that have gotten to the point where they're now IV heroin users is they've lost the job that they once had. They've lost their family supports that once were there. Because they lost a the job, they lost the health insurance to go to the doctor to afford the prescriptions. I don't have the job anymore because I lost it. Um, so now I am on the streets doing whatever it is possible to feed this addiction. They're usually aware that I'm in addiction. The ones that come in are upset with their medical provider or their prescriber, they don't. And it's trying to get them to see what addiction looks like, not what you thought it was on TV. How slippery is that slope from my doctor cut me off to I'm going to go down a country road and see this person and pick up some black market drugs? It, from the time the doctor cuts off, we usually start seeing what's called doctor shopping. That means my doctor says no, I'm going to go see if another doctor will say yes. Um, but there's a lot of changes in the way things used to be. Now they can track, you know, who was prescribing you what, when was it the last time. Now there's care coordination in place. I want to talk to your old doctor. And it, because of those, those things, it's not as easy as it used to be. Now that's a crime. That makes someone a criminal for wanting to treat their pain. How do you see that? Is that a criminal act or is it an act of uh, desperation because you perceive yourself being sick? It's not at that point a criminal act. It's still a, the, the, the mindset of that person is not that I'm going to do something illegally or I'm trying to. The mindset of that person, that place is I'm hurting. I need help. I need someone to help me. My doctor is not helping me anymore. And that's where they're at when they come in. My doctor is not helping me anymore. And so it's not at this place where I need my drugs. It's I need my medicine. 
you know, it's not a Democratic or a Republican thing in Sampson County, but this is a conservative, laid back community. It's rurally based. How does that change the game to getting people to open up about a potential problem they may have and not want to admit to it? Or for those who are very open in a conservative social environment? Well, here in Sampson County, we're also a very faith-based area. Um, a lot of people are in the agricultural business and they belong to local churches. And so the first part is, again, educating. Because if people don't know, they're going to fall victim to this scenario that happens time and time again. So the first step is connecting to your local churches, letting them know what's happening. Say, if you have people, can you talk about this? Can you offer this material? Can you let them know these are some things that it looks for? Because Again, if you say, I am the substance use person, a person will say, no, that's not me. I don't need to talk to you. But if I am going and I'm talking to a deacon at my church about it, I trust this person. If he's saying this is something that I might need to look into, well, I'll talk to him. What is the appropriate response when you realize you might have a problem? You live in a rural area, social uh, sensitivities aside, you go to your church deacon, as, as you said, but there's also facilities here like Commonwealth Health. What's the right call? Well, some of the times what we see is we tell, they're not ready to say, I need to go to behavioral health. I'm not ready to go talk to the substance use. They'll go and they'll talk to their doctor. And when their doctor is saying no, they may say, well, maybe have you considered that you might want to talk to someone about this? Because if I've given you this and you've been using it all up in this short time frame, it's with the medical doctor see, I'll do this prescription, but you're done with it in a week. And it was meant to be for 30 days. We need you to go talk to someone about that. Oh, but when I go to the addiction center and when I go to the official government medical facility, that's a real problem. I don't have that. I'm just playing the devil's advocate here. I can talk to my pastor about it, maybe a sibling, maybe a parent. Any difference? Is it the, the difference would be, again, if we're in the community and we're touching and we're educating, and we're providing the education, whether you're in the dental clinic or you're in the medical clinic or whether you're at uh, our other site that has an OBGYN, if we're providing them the education, then it can't be I didn't know. It can't be, well, here are the things to look for. Here are the things to do. If I'm needing my, if I'm running out of my prescription before it's supposed to be, if I'm needing it before I'm supposed to have to take it, if all of a sudden I'm willing to do some things I wouldn't have done before, if my family members are saying to me they think I have a problem, these are some things to look at and think. From your perspective working at Comwell, is the opioid crisis as we see it in modern times, how does it compare to the crack cocaine issues, the alcohol issues, cocaine issues maybe back in the 80s? Uh, is it always really bad in crisis or is there something different about opioids? I think the way that it, it, it comes about, especially when the ones that we're seeing now, when someone decides I am going to uh, smoke crack or snort cocaine or I am going to take this illegal methamphetamine that's been done they have the knowledge that I'm going to do this for a certain experience I'm doing this because I want to know what this will make me feel like when someone slips from the part and there are those still that do say I want to go try heroin but those that start with the, the pills and then they slide down that slope they didn't wake up that morning saying that they woke up saying Oh, I've hurt myself. They've told me to go to my doctor about that. My doctor prescribes me this. So the, the population has changed. These are not people that are uneducated. These are not people that don't have homes, families, um, cars, um, insurance, and are looking at retirement. It, it, those type of drugs and, and addictions didn't touch th that population. So now you're touching a, a group of people that feel like this shouldn't happen to me because I'm not, I'm not the addict. What is the perspective of the person who's facing a substance use disorder? Do they know that they're affecting their family at the level they may be affecting? Usually not until things are getting lost, when the consequences of their actions are, are starting to hit. When all of a sudden I've got to hide that the mortgage hasn't been paid from my wife and now she knows. Um, when all of a sudden my job is saying I've lost it because I haven't showed up or I've showed up intoxicated or I called it, didn't call in um, one day. When the consequences happen, that's when they say, wow, okay, there's, there's a problem.